Beauty. We live for it, we certainly work hard for it, and are ready to suffer for it. In the early 20th century, as it turns out, people were just as obsessed with it and were ready to spend some serious cash on some questionable products to achieve it. Fairy dust. In this video, we're going to look at an interesting moment in human history when radium was trending and ask ourselves if we can learn something from this ironically not so bright trend that may be applied to our modern predicament. Now let me give you some of the side effects of the Kangen water. It hydrates your brain in 30 seconds. The water is micro cluster. You're gonna sleep better. Your energy is gonna skyrocket. Mission zero. First motion. First motion. On July 21st, 1902, after four years of hard, painful work, Marie and Pierre Curie managed to isolate one-tenth of a gram of radium chloride. To do this, they had to purify eight tons of pitch blend, which is this dark, grimy-looking mineral found in the Earth's crust that contains tiny amounts of radium. The public's response to the discovery of this new element was initially... Meh, as most people were all about that x-ray craze. Since Röntgen's x-ray of his wife's hand went viral in 1895, which in the late 19th century meant it was basically published in every single newspaper, followed by an avalanche of advertisements promoting x-rays for everyone. Like this newspaper ad for the x-ray apparatus for professionals and amateurs. Radium first gained attention in private hospitals and clinics in France as a treatment for cancer and tuberculosis, although there was very little understanding of its actual effects on the human body. This veil of mystery around radium, combined with the basic human desire for hope to find cures for diseases like cancer and some sketchy reporting, is what created this image of radium as a magical, beautiful new element. The public's fascination with radium was further expanded by Dr. William J. Morton, a respected American physician who, in 1904, mixed up a special kind of cocktail with quinine, or the stuff in tonic water that makes it glow under UV light, and radium, which he called liquid sunshine, and claimed would cause the whole interior of a patient to light up, bathing the interior tissues in sunshine. Dr. Morton's um, magic cocktail and the idea of bringing sun into the inside of the body was later dismissed by scientists of his time, but not before the amazing world of advertising could latch onto the idea of radium as sunshine and vitality. The very word radium began to be associated with scientific excitement, beauty, and brightness. Besides radium being wrapped up in mystery and associated with beauty, it was also very, very, very expensive. To extract just a tiny speck of it meant you needed to purify several tons of that alien-looking mineral pitch blend. One gram of highly purified radium could cost up to half a million US dollars in today's money. It might seem like you need a degree in chemistry to decipher the long and complicated ingredient lists of skincare products today. But in the 1920s and 30s, even the top scientists didn't quite understand the effects of radioactivity on the human body, which basically made it free real estate for companies looking to make some quick cash. One example of this was a product range called Tho Radia, launched in 1933 in Paris. Their product line included a face cream, lipstick, powder, and soap that contained radioactive thorium chloride and radium bromide. The advertising focused on a glowing complexion, and the products were said to stimulate cellular vitality, activate circulation, cure pimples, and get rid of wrinkles. 
basically fix literally everything. I gotta give it to Thor Radia though, their advertising is beautiful and the modernist design of the packaging was quite revolutionary for its time. Another type of product that was far more dangerous and exploited the radium hype was radium water, offered by thermal spas, sold in take-home bottles or as a DIY kit to make your own radioactive water at home. An example of this is the Radiumizer, a product from the 1920s sold in the US. The product is basically two containers with the purple container on the left containing radium and by blowing air through it, the water in the second container would be infused with radon, which is the gaseous radioactive decay daughter of radium. Similar products like the radium emanator were supposed to be placed in water overnight to make it radioactive. Hello, Science Bubble here. Let's have a quick sciencey look at the science of radium and radioactivity. So radium is an alkali metal with the atomic number 88. All of radium's isotopes or versions of radium with different numbers of neutrons are radioactive. And when ingested or inhaled, they accumulate in the bones because of radium's chemical similarity to another alkali metal, calcium. Here we can see a bone x-ray of a person that was exposed to radium, with the black spots being parts of the bone where radium has deposited itself. Because radium has a long half-life of 1600 years, meaning that it will take 1600 years for half of radium to decay, it will cause damage to the bone and the tissue for a very long time while decaying into other radioactive elements. One of the decay products of radium is radon, a radioactive, odorless and colorless inert gas. Radium is not only super dangerous because of its long half-life, but also because you don't need to really ingest it for it to cause damage. Just being around radium can cause you to inhale radon, which will decay further in your lungs into polonium isotopes, which can damage cell DNA with alpha and gamma radiation. Now, you might be asking yourself at this point, why did people believe these insane claims and buy such products? Well, in the early 20th century, radioactivity was being used to treat cancer with some success by placing tubes filled with radium salts on the site of the cancer. So the logic behind these products was if radium is so good and can cure cancer when placed outside of the body, then imagine the insane benefits from bringing it inside of the body. Luckily, this faulty logic is something that we have definitely left in the past. Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks who could. right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of lungs, so it'd be interesting to check that, so that you're gonna have to use medical doctors. You just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would... Perhaps the most notorious radium product with fun side effects was Radithor, radioactive water sold in America and produced by William Bailey, an entrepreneur who already had a lot of experience in the snake oil business. While his previous venture, Less I Go for Superb Manhood, a product that was supposed to cure impotence, didn't quite manage to succeed, Radithor was a huge hit, both to the health of people who bought it and for Bailey's pocket. Radithor was sold at a 400% profit margin, around $30 per bottle, which would be about $500 in today's money. And Bailey, despite having literally no scientific background, promoted it as a cure for the living dead, basically able to cure any kind of mental or physical disease from asthma to diabetes. 
and of course as a cure for impotence. Eben Byers was one of the most publicized victims who drank about 1400 bottles of Radithor, eventually dying from radiation poisoning and being buried in a lead-lined coffin because his body was dangerously radioactive. While all of these products actually contained radium and were radioactive, there were a bunch of others that just exploited the hype, like radium silk, radium boot polish, cigarettes, nail clippers, and playing cards. These products didn't actually contain any radium, but because advertising laws were pretty loose at the time, companies could just slap the word radium on a product and ride out the trend wave. Besides beauty products and quack cures, radium was infamously added to a paint named Undark and used to paint clock dials to make them glow in the dark, which eventually led to one of the biggest workplace safety lawsuits in American history. The clock dials were painted mostly by young women who were trained to lick the brushes between strokes in order to point them and save paint by not having to dip the brush in water. You might wonder why anyone in their right mind would agree to eat radioactive material, but in the 1910s, radium was seen as a cure-all that improved the quality of anything. The women would even use leftover paint on their nails and teeth to make them glow for fun. Unfortunately, all of these dial workers, later called the radium girls, experienced an extreme level of radiation poisoning, and the majority of them didn't make it into their 30s. And radium's popularity quickly declined. Today, radium has mostly been replaced in cancer treatment, but radioactive quackery, believe it or not, still exists as a small niche market. While you can't just go on Amazon and buy a chunk of radium, one example of this quackery are negative ion or quantum energy products, whatever the fuck that means, that claim to shield you from Wi-Fi and 5G, but in reality emit dangerous levels of radiation. I think that these days, even though most most of us have a much deeper understanding of radioactivity than scientists did in the 1920s. Like, we know that we are all exposed to tiny amounts of background radiation. The word radiation, however, can still cause this tiny little amount of anxiety in most people. The word radiation immediately makes me think of like a green, vile blob that is destroying everything in its path. Maybe this is just because I've watched way too many cartoons. I guess what I'm trying to say is that this whole story of how our view of radiation went from obsessed and loving it to somewhat afraid is something to keep in mind whenever there is an emerging hype around a new product or technology. Please like this video and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.